Most of us have seen a lava lamp, right? Either in real life or on TV. It looks like blobs and bubbles of lava rising and falling inside of this lamp at high heat. The lamp itself is physically hot to touch. These bubbles and blobs stir up the contents of the lamp even more as they rise and fall. Now, imagine that each of these bubbles inside this lava lamp is about 70 to 80 times the size of the Earth. And the lamp itself is a star. Turns out, that's very much the real-life scenario and the future of our own star. In some time, giant blobs of convection like this is what will happen to the Sun. And astronomers found out all about this of course from theory, but also from observing a nearby star. Our Dardis is a very interesting star. It's about 178 light years from Earth and it is one of the largest visible stars from Earth as well. It is located in the constellation Dorado, which looks like a Mahi Mahi fish. And this star, our Dardis, is a red giant. A red giant is a much larger star than our sun and, of course, is reddish-orange in color. In infrared, red giants are among the brightest stars. They emit a lot of their energy in the form of infrared. Our Doradus is among the brightest in infrared at night and it is a variable star with its brightness periodically going up and down as we observe it from Earth. Astronomers are quite interested in understanding red giants because the red giant phase of a star's life is where our sun is heading. That's the next stage of our own sun's life. We can study the sun in great detail from here, from at Earth. But to study the physical characteristics of what the sun will become, astronomers will have to observe red giants that are located outside of our solar system within our galaxy, of course. So that's what this study aimed to do as well. The team observed the gas in the atmosphere of and around the R. Doradus star and they wanted to track exactly what is visible in lava lamps, that is the bubbles of material that rise up and fall through the body of the star and become visible at the surface. These are basically convection bubbles. So we know that stars produce heat at their cores as atoms are pushed together into each other and undergo fusion. In the process, they release a lot of heat and energy. And this heat and energy ultimately travels from the core of a star to its surface, after which it is radiated into space. What happens within the body of the star itself for this heat to rise up is basic convection. The hot material rises up through the body of the sun and reaches the surface, while cooler surface material cools and shrinks down. This is what happens on the surface of Earth as well when it comes to mantle and rocks. And this is something that we can commonly see all around us, convection, right? This is why we have ACs closer to the ceiling in a room so that cool air can sink down. And we have radiators and heaters closer to the floor so warm air can rise up and thus spread the temperature across a whole room. Within stars, warmer, hotter masses of material rise up through the body of the star. They travel to the surface for a few minutes or weeks or months and then burst at the surface of a star in the form of bubbles. They appear similar to bubbles, such as those that can be seen in boiling water. And all these bubbles are basically hot material that is being carried up from the core. And that's the energy that then spreads out outside of the star. So effectively, when this team of astronomers used the ALMA telescopes in Chile and looked at the R. Doradus star to see these convection bubbles, they found exactly what they were looking for. The kicker is that they were able to observe these bubbles in much, much more detail than even they thought they could. So the images that have come out of the study, images and videos, are more detailed than expected, even to the experts who observed them. For the first time, astronomers have managed to not just observe such large-scale phenomena on a different star, but they have also managed to capture parameters like the speed of movement of these convection cells that transfer heat. These gas bubbles on all stars move at speeds of a few kilometers per second and they persist for a few minutes or days or months on a star. 
On our sun, the convection cells or these large lumps of hot material carrying energy from the core disperse within minutes or so because the heat runs out as it spreads across the sun's body. But on our Doradus, the astronomers noted that these convection cells, first of all, all of them were like 100 million kilometers wide and they persisted for about a month in the star. So they could be observed and studied for days from Earth. This of course helped the team with the objective of their study, which was to understand what happens to stars like our sun as these stars age and reach the end of their lifetimes. This convection process with heat and energy traveling up and cold material coming down carries on for as long as energy is generated in the core, which is for as long as fusion continues. But when the star runs out of fuel, when fusion stops, the top layers of the star start blowing off. Our sun is much, much smaller than our Doradus today. So observing the star in great detail is like looking at a zoomed in future version of our sun. There are some interesting questions. How come convection changes and these cells become so much larger and persist for a month on a red giant, but not on our sun, for example? These are the kind of things that astronomers and solar physicists learn from studying stars like these. Now, remember earlier when we said that in some time, the sun will start undergoing mechanics like this and begin becoming a red giant? Well, technically, that is speaking in stellar lifetime terms. So in about 5 billion years, our sun, life-giving sun, will graduate and grow up to become a red giant. It will swell up in size and expand and release layers and layers of material throughout the solar system, flying out towards all of the planets that orbit the sun. By this time, Earth might have either moved much faster or could have been swallowed up by the red giant, we don't know yet. And maybe if humankind survives, our descendants would already be in various other star systems across the galaxy, 5 billion years from now. We might not know what happens to our own future as a species 5 billion years from now, but we do understand what happens to stars and what will happen to our sun. And studies like this make us in turn understand how the growth of the sun will affect other planets in our solar system. And therefore, we can take a stab at guessing what might happen to life such as ours as well.